Welcome to Behind the Frames. I'm your host, Jarrell Bianueva, and this is my partner, Armando. Armando, say what's up. What's up? Welcome to our podcast. As you noticed, the quality is way much better because we found a way better method. So kudos to us and kudos to you because now it's not hard on your ears. Am I right? It's like a miracle. It's, it is uh, a miracle. It's, it's miraculously just been changed like i i listened to our podcast from last week if anyone listened to it all the way through i congratulate you because that was a nightmare same you know as much as proud as i am releasing that podcast man we could have done way better if we had more time but i think you know we probably just jumped right into it and you know what it's okay. We learned from our mistakes, and here we are with a better sounding um, episode. So let uh, yeah. So now your ears are fully um, they're relaxed. You know. Yep. Just sit back and buckle up, cause you're in for a show. But yeah. Um. Just to uh, reiterate, we are on now. Um. I think four major streaming platforms. So we are on Spotify, which you could probably be listening on. We're also on YouTube and we're also on Breaker and Radio Public. If you know what those sites are, then, you know, listen to your podcast there. But we are on four major platforms. We're still working on getting to a couple sites as well, like Apple and Google. So watch out for that. And we'll, you know, keep you guys updated on any new stuff that's going to happen with us so you know just keep an eye out on our social medias and yeah. we'll let you know going back though um about our first episode man it was so freaking painful to edit that <laughs> episode i'm uh we, we, we were actually editing together over facetime and we went through the entire thing oh my god it was painful to, to listen to and it was, it really was there was so many cuts that had to be made because we probably had man, to cut out we like were, ten minutes. Yeah, we only had to cut like so the episode would have been like fifty minutes without the cuts, but the cuts we had to we had to make the cuts because if we kept it as the raw uncut version, no one would want to listen to that. No, no, definitely yeah, not. Um, moving on, how you been, Armando? I've been pretty good. You know, I've been pretty active um i i in the past i've I have been having some trouble like uh sleeping and getting a regular schedule i'm sure a lot of you could agree with me on that because of this quarantine but you know this past week i've been um getting up pretty early every day going to take some pictures or uh record music or something you know like i've just been trying to be active every day what about you I've been actually, you know, been pretty good. You know, I have a consistent sleeping schedule. I've been working on, you know, this podcast and, you know, the script from last episode. And, um, yeah, dude, like, i just been working. And also, I just finished my finals for uh, college. So oh, congrats. Uh, I know I got a B on my final. Wow, look at you getting yeah. those good grades. I don't like school though. <laughs> who who does? But yeah, dude. Um, how's your song coming along? I remember you sent me a sample of it. I scrapped it and I started a new one. You started a new song? I started a, new, a whole new song, yeah. Wow. All right. Well, let's get right into it. We're today this episode is gonna be talking about photography, our favorite subject. Yes. Give me your pics. All right, so Armando, like with photography, like how did you begin? Like, what was like before you even started photography? What was like the leading up factor into it? Well, I think we talked about this last episode, but you know, just to refresh your minds, um, when I was in high school, I was a huge drama nerd, and every year I would be in the school play, and I actually, I I don't want to take full credit, but I will, anyways. I started the drama club. So if any of you listening to this, go to Vallejo now. You're welcome. Because that club is amazing. Dang, and big shout out here. to Mr. Cannon. Because he is the, the real MVP. 
he's the drama teacher at Vallejo High. So I had a good friend that I went to the drama classes with, and me and him were actually trying to be musicians at the time. And we would, you know, film our music video, and then I would take pictures of a cover for the video or something like that. And from there, I kind of learned a little bit how to take pictures. But at the time, it was just pictures from an iPhone. So it wasn't really anything special. But that's how I got into it from, you know, making music videos and taking pictures for the music videos. And from there, I, this is after high school now, I was um, out with my girlfriend taking pictures, just a couple pictures. And I realized how much I like taking pictures. You know, yeah, I realized how much of an art it is and how fun it can be. So it's interesting that um, you say that you start with an iPhone because I did too. Oh yeah, and um, you know, uh, you know our friend Dom. Yeah, of course. Yeah, so um, we back in freshman year. Oh my god, I hate that I'm gonna tell this story, but back in freshman year, me and Dom would always um, walk home after school, and like you know, sometimes we would go up like the hill in my neighborhood to take pictures. Yeah. Did you hold hands However, too? <laughs> no, we did not. But um we uh we went up the hill and um we would take pictures on my iPhone 4S. Oh man. That's Yeah, that's how that's how um that's how old it was and um actually no, it was an iPhone 5. And <laughs> around that time iPhone the iPhone 5 camera at the time was like really good for some reason and we would go up the hill, take pictures and um we would like we would do superhero poses and like you know like the you know comic book poses and all that and we would post it on instagram with the instagram filters and we just did so much i remember that um, yeah (laughs) we did so much with um what we had that was the reason why i started doing photography like i was like oh shoot like this is so cool like we're doing poses like we got pictures going and we would post on instagram and like do our fucking cheesy freaking captions you know the emo ones back in the day. <laughs> do you um, remember do you remember that picture that we took uh, it was like a freeze frame of you in midair and you, you were wearing what the one where you were in a nightwing shirt yeah, I remember that. I still have it, I think. I, I It's on one of our Instagrams. Yeah, it's on your old Instagram. I remember because I, yeah. I still look at it. I'm just like, God damn. Yeah. But, um, yeah, it started with um, phone mm-hmm. photography and, you know, just like getting creative, like using different angles. Because at the time, with um, we didn't have like professional cameras. We didn't have the, you know, like manual mode and like, you know, you could set up different settings. It was just like playing with light and playing with the focus, you know. When I transitioned into you know taking pictures with an actual camera it it was such a dramatic change because i never knew what any of these words were you know shutter aperture i didn't know any of that and i had to learn from pretty much youtube youtube taught me everything i know today about cameras even though i went to school for it (laughs) that transition from iphone to camera was actually pretty dang interesting because the re- okay, so the reason why I bought my camera was so I can take better pictures, right? Yeah. However, I did not realize um, back then when I like back when I got my first camera, like I thought it was gonna be simple as point and shoot because you know I've been shooting on an iPhone, right? Yeah, I me too. So like I remember <laughs> I took Dom to San Francisco once to go on a photo shoot, right? Yeah. How'd you guys oh, get my- there? We got there because um my family also went to um San Francisco chill for the day. Oh, so you went with your family? Okay. Yeah. It was so bad because when I was taking pictures of Dom and like, you know, basically anything, right? Because I have a new camera, I'm like so excited and everything, right? <laughs> was it, is this um, the Nikon? This is the Nikon. I, yeah, the one I ha- still have. Okay. Um, I remember when I was shooting, like, sometimes, like, the the photo would be too overexposed, underexposed, too dark, too bright, you know? And sometimes it wouldn't be in focus, and I'm just like, what is going on? And here's the thing. I didn't do any prior research. I just went straight into it. Were you shooting in manual? I was shooting in manual, yeah. 
Oh my god! Wow! And I, <laughs> I can't and I believe just, you. I didn't know what shutter speed was. I didn't know what aperture was. I didn't know what um, ISO was. Like, I was just like, "What am I doing?" And I just played with it, and like until like I got like this the pictures I wanted, but it still wasn't the best, you know? Yeah. And also, my dumbass shot in raw because I I remember I was like um I saw a YouTube video was like where it said shoot in raw, you know, right? Yeah. And I shot in raw, and I when I got back home, what's it called? I tried looking at the photos, but then there were just, like the the I had a Windows at the time, and it said, "Oh, we cannot read your file at the moment because you know oh my it's God. not compatible." <laughs> and I was like, "Why is my photo not showing up on my computer?" And then I had to convert it online because at the time I didn't have Lightroom, so I was just like, "What am I doing with this right now?" You know. But eventually, I I started watching YouTube, started learning, and started reading, and all that. Yeah, I that's how I got into it too. Um, so the way I actually got my first camera was a trade situation. So as I said before. I do make music and in high school I made it a lot more than I do now. And so I had my own studio. It wasn't much of a studio, but it was still something. It was a it was like a 2005 Mac with a $50 microphone and a pop filter and I made that work. I have some masterpieces on there. And uh, but anyway, um I traded it because my friend had a camera he had a canon t6 and i was like you know what i don't need this anymore you make music i want to take pictures let's trade if you give me your camera i'll give you my computer and so yeah we traded and i got my canon i I still have it today but i don't ever use it anymore so after i got the camera I was like super pumped about, oh, I finally have a camera. You know, I can I can do so many things. And I, like for two weeks straight, I was looking on YouTube, like everything. I was looking up what everything meant, you know, how to how to shoot pictures, how to how to make them look nice, how to edit them. And like if you look at my my YouTube history, it's still all there. I should probably get back into researching because it's never too late to learn more stuff you know well yeah talking about um our first cameras you know my camera is a nikon d3200 and it's you know despite what people say about nikon it's a really good camera it is i i liked it more than the canon actually because for a time me and cj had switched cameras oh yeah i had uh we switched uh so i gave Armando, my Nikon D3200, in exchange for his T6 or Canon T6, because you know I kind of wanted to um, try something new with a new camera, but in the end we we switched back. Yeah. Or, well, he gave back the Nikon. I think I got the better deal out of that because yeah, <laughs> the the Nikon is way better than the Canon was, and I'm not talking trash about Canon because Canon has some really great products, but the Rebels. They're, I mean, they're good for beginners, but they're pretty frustrating at times. And so can the Canon. I mean, so can the Nikon. The Nikon can also be frustrating, but I, it takes some really quality pictures. Yeah, the problem I had with the Canon when I was playing with it was um, the fact that it was like not as sharp as the Nikon. Because I remember when... I would take pictures with even with the kit lens, you know, like I could still get some decent photos with like nice sharpness to it, right? Yeah. With the Canon, you know, using a kit lens was a fucking piece of shit. <laughs> and, it really and is. Then, and I bought a Nifty Fifty for the Canon too. I remember. Um, I thought that would make it all better because you know the Nifty Fifty is one of, like the greatest lens, right? Yeah. I was so but, jealous. I was so <laughs> jealous when you got that. I was like, "Oh my god, he has the best lens ever!" <laughs> nah, dude, it did not do anything. I remember I tried taking pictures with it. I mean, sure, it was a improvement from like the kit lens, but I just remember I was getting so frustrated with it because it wasn't focusing right, and like the pictures weren't always sharp. And, like, I was just super getting irritated i was just like oh my god like this is such a piece of shit yeah and then uh, and then i got the same lens but for the nikon 
Yeah, dude. Like with the Nikon, I remember when I saw your photos and, um, you know, I used the 50 on the Nikon, the one you bought. Yeah. I remember I was just like, holy shit, this lens is like way better than like the Canon one, you know? Yeah, and it's weird how it's like that because it's literally the same lens, just different brand, you know? Yeah. So, you you know, when you, if you are trying to get into photography, you should always do research on your products before you buy them because it'll save you a, a lot of heartache, you know? Just, I could have saved one hundred twenty-five dollars. <laughs> yeah, you could have. <laughs> you know, sometimes you, that's how it it is. You gotta like buy something, see it, like you know, basically test it out. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. I mean, you, the best thing you could do is probably sell it on eBay or whatever, or yeah. just keep it. And you right. know, another thing you can do is you can always rent out items you can always rent out products and try them before you buy them that, that's yeah. another great option but yeah dude like um the nikon has done <laughs> wonders for me over the years i remember i have like so now that we switch back um cameras um i also acquired armando's nifty 50 <laughs> and um what's it called I, we also i also have a uh telephoto lens which i use you at high school and that was a mute do you have that right now do you have both lenses or do you, i no. have one of them yeah so i have the kit lens you have the kit lens and the telephoto i have the telephoto lens dang yeah. that was but it it's okay <laughs> that, that that's a good lens but the one downfall of that lens is the photos come out a little bluish for some reason and yeah and like i would take pictures with it and like okay, I did a I actually did a gig with that camera with the telephoto. It was a mm-hmm. it was prom pictures and I, I was doing them and you know on camera they looked amazing. Like I was like, oh my god, these are some of the best pictures I've ever taken. And then I get home and I export them to Lightroom and I'm looking at them and they were trash. They were absolute trash. They were grainy, they were blue. They were like not sharp. They weren't even focused, and I was what like, were your settings? Ah. "My settings, I can't even remember. It was still in high school, or not in high school. It was like the year after high school, so it was last year." And I, you know, I have a horrible memory, but um, yeah. I was shooting in manual, and I think it was just a little too dark for the camera to handle. And that's one thing I didn't like about the Nikon is that it couldn't shoot in dark areas very well. Yeah, um, with the telephoto lens, uh, the aperture was a very, it was like five point, it was at like, well, it was like 5.8, like I think. Yeah, right? it was like, it was the aperture wasn't that great. So yeah. when you're shooting in low light situations, you're going to need a bunch of lighting in order to like capture whoever you're shooting for, right? Yeah. Um, I, rem- I had that, I had that issue a lot in high school because um, back when I was in yearbook taking pictures of the um, the football games, those pictures were not great. <laughs> Yeah, uh, it's kind of a hit or miss with it with that lens, you know. Yeah, you just gotta work with, um, you know, Lightroom. You just gotta work with your settings. You gotta like, you just gotta work your magic because there are good time. There are things like you know, it's good for portraits. But it is, um, it's amazing for portraits. Yeah, like I love taking portraits with that, um, like that lens. Yeah, I remember when you were actually teaching me how to use it uh the day we traded oh you know what the day we traded was actually on my birthday i now i'm oh, remembering shit. that yeah um we went to it was during the fires remember when all the fires were happening oh yeah i remember that we and um masks. <laughs> yeah and i actually i took my favorite photo that i have of you that that day when you're wearing the uh bluish mask over on mare island and the, okay so the spot that i'm that i took that picture at that's the spot where i took the prom pictures oh, okay yeah and for all of you listening um we'll pull up some of the pictures that we're talking about on instagram or something it's just so you can get an idea of what we're saying if you're gonna be watching this on youtube i'll also put it uh, in the video so you know what we're talking about yeah just just so you're not lost in space here where we i want to give you some insight but if you're listening to this on audio then good luck yeah (laughs) so 
with photography, I um I remember when I hit like year two, year three. This was around the time when I was uh doing yearbook shit now, you know? Yeah. And be- being the person in yearbook was like it was weird because, you know, people didn't know me, but people knew me as, um, you know, the camera guy. <laughs> During my time in high school, I remember I would just be walking around at lunch, like in the quad, right? Yeah. And sometimes people would be like, sometimes some like someone would text me like, hey, are you like doing anything right now? And then I'd be like, no, what's up? And then they'd be like, can you like meet me here? I'm like, let's take pictures. Can you take pictures of me? And then my dumb ass never charged anybody for pictures. Wow. And, like, that's throughout how I was my, at first soon. <laughs> throughout like my junior and senior year, people would just come up to me and just ask for a photo shoot. And I was just like, yeah, sure. What's up? And then I'd go home, edit like a thousand photos because I would burst so many pictures. And then they would only post like two, three pictures. And then that's it. Yeah. <laughs> my experiences at first was I would do the same thing. Like I would post on Instagram. I wasn't in high school, so I couldn't, no one was like coming up to me, you know, but, uh, I was on Instagram and I would post my work on Instagram and people would be like, Oh, can I get a photo shoot? And I'd be like, yeah, sure. And I would just do it for free because, you know, I didn't think I was good enough to charge yet. And so I ended up doing like a big majority of my photo shoots for free. And I don't think I got paid for like a year into me doing pictures and when i did get paid it was like what 50 bucks (laughs) man well i don't i only think i I think i only got paid once for a gig but i don't remember oh really but i remember i you know in high school i also did you know i i never charged anybody because you know like you i never thought i was good enough right yeah um but let me tell you about this one time where uh i took a gig in my senior year right yeah and it was this girl's uh what's it called it's in the philippines we have this thing called um debut or uh what's it called cotillion right yeah so a friend of mine um one of her friends had a cotillion and they needed a photographer fast because um it was a small budget cotillion and they just needed a photographer tell me why when my friend asked me like oh what's your rate right (laughs) <laughs> what'd you I say i just said oh i just said oh can i just use this gig as a like in my portfolio oh my god they they and literally they were, gave you an opportunity for money <laughs> i know they, they even asked like are you sure like you don't want to get paid for this and like i was like no i just want like exposure you know <laughs> wow look at you and that gig was like i mean it was like it was a good gig like you know it was like what i mean by that is that like the experience was good and that, the reason why i say it was good was because i learned a lot from event photography that night yeah but um yeah dude event photography like wedding photography or who like you know photography for any events i understand why they charge so much for like their like you know their service yeah because um it's a lot of work it is a lot of work, and I remember I was using this um, the school camera. Um, it was a Lumix GH5, right? Yeah. Which is a really good camera, and which is something I want to invest in the future. But I was also using my Nikon as well, right? Yeah. And like, um, so the way it happened was, uh, before the event happened, we, we did you know. We did photo shoots um, prior to the event because um, they needed like a, a poster to hang up on the actual day, right? So we didn't take pictures beforehand, which was okay, right? Yeah. And then the day of the actual event was like the most stressful one. And um, the day of, I remember like an hour before the event started, I was like preparing and taking pictures, right? <laughs> it's just like a, uh, t- taking pictures of what of them or just random stuff yeah of them because they were doing oh, okay. practices and you know, oh okay was just yeah and i remember i had to phone in a friend to like come by like this was so last minute i was like hey dude like do you think you can like i called uh my friend nathan you know nathan right yeah i remember i called him and i was like yo can you uh come down here and uh help me out shoot and mind you he's not a photographer right no he's not 
So um, it was very tough because I had to like teach him how to like take pictures like really quickly. <laughs> but um, did you do a good job? He did a good job. We got some great shots, like the ones oh, he cool. got of the father daughter dance, really good. But um, yeah. So like the out the event was like what four hours, right? And we were like crouching, standing, running around, and dude, my legs were tired at the end of it, bro. I bet that sounds and, like, tough. The hard part was like maintaining the battery levels because we always i always had to like change battery levels and like i was so unprepared for this gig i was just like what am i doing and then you know at the end of it we had like three thousand photos and then i had to edit all of them and they were all in raw so my computer was like dying (laughs) um i can hear it running from here yeah (laughs) yeah i've only done one event in my photography career and it i mean it it, i don't know i don't even know if i want to consider it an event because it was just in a very small room it was for my cousin who does um he sells products online and he hosts events sometimes to you know help him sell his product and he asked me if i can go take pictures for him and he had like a little backdrop and he had some other other vendors there and pretty much i just took pictures of the vendors and the products and that's it i just went home and i edited the pictures there i don't even think i I probably had like 300 pictures tops and yeah that, that was pretty much it that was my event uh but other than that the only I've I've only really done portrait photography. I'm I'm a really big portrait photographer. That's my passion, you know. Like I was actually going to do a wedding, but the people getting married, they found a different photographer, and I'm okay with that cuz at that time I would have went crazy. I was not prepared at all. I didn't even have the right, you know, um gear for the job and it was like two hours away it was over in lake tahoe they wanted me to drive all the way out there for like 200 bucks to do their wedding and i <laughs> i would have went crazy 200 bucks 200 bucks for a wedding and i and then they, they sent me like a list of of what they all wanted i actually del- deleted the list yesterday i would have pulled it up today but um it, they wanted a lot they wanted a lot for what they were asking for yeah no dude like for people listening right now the reason why event photographers charge so much is because there's just so much shit that they have to go through before the event even starts you know yeah it it's a lot it's a lot of time but, it, it's a lot of you know hard work going back to it though like when you were doing the product photography we're using your um your nikon or not nikon or the nikon canon or sony which one are you using uh i believe i was using the canon how did those uh pictures work out for you they looked they looked pretty good yeah i i i think it worked out i i chose the camera because the canon has you know it it can handle more light i remember that's why i chose the canon to take on me with the shoot and here's another thing for you guys starting out if you're not you know used to a camera yet and you have a gig coming up and you have more than one camera stick to the camera that you know of because if you if you go on a shoot and you don't know you know how to use your camera properly it's it's just going to consume all of your time you're not going to have enough time to focus on your pictures and you're going to wish that you know you did it differently so that's a warning for you guys if you don't know how to use a camera make sure you know how to use it before you go on a gig and it's also uh, adding on to that you know it also look kind of unprofessional when you're like when you look like you're trying to figure out your camera in front of your clients because yeah you know obviously you want to give your clients the uh, you know the confidence that you know what you're doing because i was in a situation like that you know talking about the same gig you know i was using a gh5 and i only worked with that for like a couple days before i actually did the event and you know if i had more time with it i would probably done better i would have been more efficient i would have known what to do and you know kind of just like work with like whatever like you know basically did a better job 
However, you know, I only borrowed the uh, GH5 pro- like two days prior, and that, that wasn't enough time. So, yeah. But moving on, uh, the one thing I want to talk about is working with what you got. You know, me and Armando were we were we work with uh, entry level DSLRs right now, and you know, eventually we want to, you know, invest in like you know expensive equipment. But you know, if you are a photographer right now, like beginning or you know, or you're just broke, work with what you got because all it takes is just a little bit of patience, and you can get something good. Yeah, you know, you don't need fancy cameras to make amazing shots. They're there are some, you know, if you have the talent, if you have the passion, you can work with anything. You don't need any expensive camera, any expensive lens. You can literally shoot a, a photo shoot on an iPhone or or an Android, anything, anything that has a camera you can shoot with. There's people who go to the store and buy disposable cameras and do whole photo shoots with just a $5 disposable camera, you know, and they look amazing. So, you know, don't let what you have get you down because you can work with it. And honestly, it's like the best time to start is now, you know, there is no best time than now, you know, like if you got a camera, pick it up, take a picture, because even if it's like the shittiest camera, at least learn how to, like you know, show, like, you know, compose a picture at least, you know, because no matter what limitations your camera has, you know, there's no limitations on your creativity. The only limitations are the limitations you set for yourself. Armando, you had some really great shots, both with the Nikon and the Sony. I remember when I looked at your pictures, I was like, God damn, you're better than me. Thank you. I disagree. But <laughs> um, yeah, I you know, I have got some really amazing shots on both. I remember when I first got my Sony, I probably had it for a month, not even a month, because I got it in August, and this picture was taken on um, around August 30th, so I probably had it for half half a month. So in New Mexico, where my family is from, there is this uh, ceremony called the Zobra, and it's pretty much like the Burning Man. If you haven't heard of that, it's where there's a giant structure that looks like a man. And inside of it, they stuff pictures, notes, letters, um, receipts, bills, anything negative that you don't want anymore, they put inside of it. And they do this whole fire dance and uh they have a concert a live band goes there and thousands of people from all over the world like hundreds of th- hundreds of thousands of people come to this thing and they just light it on fire and everyone's like chanting like yeah light it up and and um it's it's a really good experience if you know if you're not familiar with it it might be a little scary to you at first cuz I, the man he makes some pretty crazy noises. He like screams for his life while you're burning him, and it's giant. It's like it's just this just giant man. And I took some really great pictures of him while he went up in flames. And for you guys listening on YouTube, I'll I'll you know pull them up for you now. And I think that these are my very favorite pictures that I've ever taken on the Sony and it's crazy because I had just got the camera and with the Nikon my favorite picture that I've ever taken is actually street photography I have recently gotten into street photography more and this picture is actually the very first street photography picture I, I've ever taken I was down on first street in Benicia and I was walking you know, more towards the pier. And there was this old man with a really nice motorcycle and he was wearing a green flannel shirt and his motorcycle was the same color green that he, that he had on. And I was like, wow, that he looks so cool. You know, I should go take a picture of him. So I went up to him, I asked him, Hey, you know, I really like, you know, the way you look, that sounds kind of creepy, <laughs> but I mean, sometimes that's all you got to do. You know, you just got to go up to someone and, and say, Hey, you know, I really like your style. Do you mind if I take a picture of you for, for my Instagram or for my portfolio? 
And so I went up to him. I said, hey, my name's Armando. I'm a photographer. Um, do you mind if I take your picture? And he said, yeah, no problem. And he gave, he, he told me a whole story. I can't remember it now because, you know, I, like I said, I have a bad memory. I should probably get that checked out, but he let me take his picture. And then I take, I took a couple pictures of his bike and just the, I don't know. He has so much character and you know, when they say a picture holds a thousand words, like when I look at this picture, that expression really comes to life. You know, I think the best pictures are the pictures that hold, you know, a meaning to it. You know, they say like the best photos uh, that are taken are the ones that hold a lot of meaning, you know, for me, like the best photos I taken, I've taken on the, um, the Nikon were actually, so it was in high school and there were like two protests. I remember that happened in my junior year and it was um it was two political protests one was when donald trump got elected oh I remember, god i remember i took out my camera and i just took pictures of people you know marching the quad you know protesting and all that i remember those pictures were really good because you know it conveyed a lot of raw emotion yeah and also like like when I was taking those pictures, you know, everybody was just so like ramped up, you know. And the second one was actually about gun violence. It was a gun violence protest because around the time it was around the uh, the Florida shooting. Yeah. And uh, what's it called? The school was protesting, you know, ending gun violence. And I remember there were like testimonies and it was a rainy day and I took out my camera and I started taking pictures and like, you could see the sadness on people's faces. And, you know, like when I look back at those photos, I'm just like, man, these photos are like raw, authentic. And, um, I, I remember we sent it to the superintendent and he liked them a lot. Oh yeah. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, dude, like the best photos I've taken are actually like photos from events and because in high school I, I was a yearbook photographer so obviously event photography was my thing and um but i remember those two specific uh events i captured like really good photos um i don't know if i have the i'll see if i have the pictures still but um yeah dude yeah i remember those were pretty sad times i i believe we had a protest on the same day because i know we didn't go to the same school but my school also had protests i didn't unfortunately i didn't take pictures because i wasn't a photographer yet but yeah that, that was a really sad time uh you know in my opinion some of the best pictures are the ones that show emotion it's it's not easy to capture emotion in a picture you know yeah dude like um it was just, I remember when I was taking those photos, like, it was a gloomy day, so I remember I was just like, you know, I'll make these black and white in post, right? Yeah. And that Both, in both events, I made it black and white, and, you know, looking back at it, I'm just like, man, these could be in a history book or in a newspaper, and, you know, it was just, I was just like, these are really good photos, and I think these should be showcased. They should be. But they never got showcased. It's okay. It was only on my Instagram, but then I deleted it. But it's cool. <laughs> Do you, you still don't have them? I still have them. They're on my hard drive. Okay. I think the best photos I've taken were in black and white. You know, <laughs> both portrait and event. I think black and white was the style that I uh, enjoyed. M me too. And you know what's funny about it is you actually got me into taking black and white photos. You're the one that taught me how to do it I and did. how to edit them. You did. You, I'll give you full credit for every black and white picture I take because you taught me everything I know about black and whites. Oh man. I'm so serious. So the the picture I actually was talking about of the man on the motorcycle, that's a black and white picture. And the reason why it holds so much character is because it's in black and white. In my opinion, at least, I'll give you a, a side by side of both with color and in black and white. And you guys can, you know, tell me which one you think holds more character. But I remember I remember when you taught me how to do it, actually. Uh, you saw me editing a black and white and he, you were like, what are you doing? And I was like, I'm editing my picture. And then you were like, why are you doing it like that? He look, do it like this. And you took my computer and you, and then you, you maxed out the contrast and then you lowered the, um, 
the exposure and I was like, Oh my God, he's a genius. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then I can't remember what else you did, but you did some other stuff. And then ever yeah. since then I've been editing my pictures like you. Yeah. Like with black and white, I, the main thing I always <laughs> emphasize is kind of just like, I like exposing or not exposing, but I like, um, like highlighting kind of like the sharp, you know, edges, like, you know, like when, with the face, like, you know, you want that face to be, you pop out. Right. So yeah, what you do is like, you know, take out the highlights and like, you know, increase the shadow or whatever. Right. So that was my whole spiel about black and white photography. Like I wanted, I wanted the pictures to pop because the, the, the pictures that I liked in black and white, they always popped. Yeah, they do. They, that's one thing you're very good at is black and whites. Yeah, I haven't shot a black and white photo in a while, and I want to get back into it. You know, recently, I've been mostly shooting black and whites. All right, so we're going to wrap around here. You can follow us on Anchor, Spotify, YouTube, Breaker, or Radio Public. You can follow me at jarell.jpg on Instagram. Armando, where can they find you at? You can find me at arm underscore and underscore o on Instagram, or if you're a Twitter user, you can follow me at Fluffy Waldo seven oh seven. I know it's weird. I made it in ninth grade. Don't judge me, please. All right. Well, we'll see you in the next episode. Peace. Goodbye. Have a beautiful night. <laughs> <laughs>